That's on. right. So, uh, yeah, it's good to be here at GamesBeat, and hello to everybody on Twitch TV watching us right now. Um, I'm Simon. I work for Authy, which is a uh, Twilio company, and I'm going to talk to you today about security and how we can improve security for your gaming environments, building security into games themselves. And so, when I heard I was going to be presenting at this conference, I needed to turn to my gaming experts. So, first of all, I turned to uh, Nicholas, my four-year-old, and also Jack, my seven-year-old. And I said, guys, I'm going to be presenting at a conference about games. What shall I show? How do I show security protecting gaming environments? Shall I do logins to web pages? Shall I show it protecting the administrative access? And they looked at me with blank faces and said, come on, Dad, you've got to do something with Minecraft. So thanks very much to my kids for making my job a little bit harder. And then spent two weeks trying to figure out how to uh, modify Minecraft with our technology. But we succeeded, and we have a little video today to show you what we did. But before I go into that, let me just uh, talk about what our technology is and what it does from a security perspective. So we deliver a two-factor authentication service over the internet. So what is two-factor authentication? So we've, for the past 50 years, we've been using username and passwords to authenticate two things. Since the first computer was connected to the internet, you logged in. And nobody today is arguing that username and password is a good way to do it. We need to find a better solution for username and password. We need to find ways to increase the security of the username and password. And that's where two-factor authentication comes into it. So your username and password is something that you know. It's one factor. And it's something that you know. You usually have an email address for your username. And a password is something that you have invented. And people copy them all over the place. And they're easy to compromise. I can hack into a system and get your passwords if they're not stored very well. I can get in the way of your login process and grab your password. I can spoof you. I can fish you. I can socially engineer you. There's so many different ways to compromise that, that credential. What two-factor authentication does is it adds into that process not just something you know, but something that you have. So for example, a mobile device, a phone. So we leverage that device that you have to be able to provide more security. And by having something that you know and something that you have as part of that authentication, it's much harder for somebody on the other side of the world using your new username and password to get into your games profile and start trading your items or logging on to a forum and spouting information that's not true using your profile. So how do we do it? How does Authy deliver two-factor authentication? So first of all, we start with the best experience possible. So security often for users is invasive. You want to make their ability to log in something as easy as possible whilst balancing that with the security that we need to deliver. So the best way to do this is something called push notification. So you authenticate to a website, and your phone beeps and says, hey, you've got a notification. And that notification says, somebody using this username is trying to log into this service with this IP address and other information do you want to allow or deny that? So if it's me, my phone pops, yeah, I'm logging into Twitch, I'm logging into World of Warcraft, yes, that's me, and I say yes. It logs me in. If I'm sat in Starbucks and my phone beeps and it pops up, that's not me, what's going on there? I hit deny. Not only are we stopping somebody from accessing my account illegitimately, but we're also providing fraudulent information. Now I know, I being the game developer or the game provider or the platform, know what happened. It was this IP address, this person from this location, and we can gather other information from that activity to help us to detect the fraud of those accounts. But not everybody has a smartphone. Not everybody has, especially if you're talking about gaming, you have 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds that don't necessarily have a phone that has got a legitimate AT&T or Verizon or BT uh, service. So we need to find ways to uh, still allow this authentication process to continue, but still providing the security when they don't have connections to the internet. And that's why we have something called a token generator, which works offline. So if I just have my iPod Touch, and again, I'm in Starbucks trying to log into my service, I can use this code and copy this code as part of my authentication process. So what's happening there is my username and password is something that I know, and this code is being generated by the thing that I have. So we're still getting that two-factor. We're still getting that what we call out-of-band authentication. But it's just not quite as good as this initial factor, which is what we want everybody to do. But we're both still delivering security as we downgrade the capabilities of the end user. And let's go a bit further, because some people don't even have smartphones. You might be trying to push your game into a market where smartphones aren't ubiquitous. And so we have the ability, because we are a company of Twilio, we can use what the Twilio's communications network, which is the ability to send texts, voice calls, and video messages. So we can deliver this one-time password, this code, over an SMS or over a video connection. 
sorry, over a voice call. It calls you and tells you the code. So they're kind of the three main mechanisms that we as a service. So what do I do with Minecraft? How did I integrate this into Minecraft? So we're just going to roll a video here that I recorded Sunday night because I was programming right up to the end of this conference. I'm very familiar with Authy, but I'm not too familiar with the, the Minecraft uh, development platform. So I use Minecraft Forge in this video that we're just about to show to um, uh, integrate our software into Minecraft. So here you can see on the screen, we have my phone on the right-hand side with our software running. We've got my Authy app in there. And on the left-hand side, we have the Minecraft environment. And again, we're using Forge here. Thank you to everybody in the Forge community that helped me get ramped up on Minecraft over the last few weeks. And uh, we're injecting our code into the Minecraft login process. So I'm going to log into the server. And here you can see a GUI that I developed that presents the Authy. Now, this is presenting all of the capabilities of Authy for a demonstration. If you're really going to implement this, you would simplify it down and maybe not even do anything. So let's first look at SMS. So we'll start with the, the least functional uh, in the sense of the experience. So here we hit SMS. I got a, a text through the Twilio network. And here's that code. So I type that code in. And Minecraft is polling the service. Has he done it yet? It grabs that information. And, and once, once it's verified through Minecraft, it now allows me into the game, and I have full access to the game. So let's look at the, another mechanism. Let's use voice, for example. So I'll just disconnect, and we'll go back in. And by the way, I'm logging in here as an operator. So regular users might not be using 2FA. I'm just protecting the op who has a lot of power over the server. So here I click on voice. This is calling just one API in, in uh, Authy. It's just a REST call that triggers a voice call down to my mobile device. And if I were to accept that call, you can't hear this right now because it's just an a, a audio-less video, but you would hear somebody, a robot, telling you 2, 3, 4, et cetera, and you type that number in, and you validate that with a second API call. So integrating Authy is very, very simple. One API call to tell them that something's going on, a push, uh, a voice, or an SMS, and then another API to validate what comes back into the service. So, these SMS and voice, again, that's lowest common denominator. We're trying to hit phones and devices that don't have a lot of capability. But as I mentioned, we have an app as well that you can use that's generating exactly the same code. These codes are one-time passwords. So they're cryptographically tied to your user and your service. So it's a secure mechanism between the two. And once it's used, once I verify that code, you can't use it again. So even if somebody's looking over my shoulder as I'm doing this, once I use that code, it's null and void. But all of these mechanisms really are not the best user experience. I'm having to copy a piece of information in. I'm having to receive a phone call, answer a text. So as I said, in our latest version of 2FA, what we really want to do is what we call push notification. So let's show this. One more time, let's log into that Minecraft server. And this time, again, I'm pushing the button on the UI. A good implementation would be it just happens so that the end user's uh, interaction is minimized significantly. And you'll see on the phone, we're now using Apple, and we also use Google's notification system to send to the end user, hey, someone's logging into the server. Is it you? And now, unlike an SMS or those other mechanisms, I can pass in all this rich data about the user. Who is it? What are they logging into? Where are they logging in from? And I can now make an intelligent decision. Yeah, approve. Oops, it timed out while I was recording it. But let's do that again. So what happens is when that message comes in, I can see that data, and then I can hit approve. And as the end user, yes, that's me. And again, if I'm in a cafe or if I'm not at my computer not playing, I see that information, and I can deny, and I can use that as part of the fraudulent activity. So this push notification system is the way forward. All the research out there, you'll look at analysts, both in the gaming space and in other spaces, talk about security. That push notification is absolutely what you should be deploying. But Authy presents you with the options to roll back to less capable versions, because what we don't want to do is stop your users accessing your game, but we do want to secure that access. But it's not just about authentication. So here I've got a door in Minecraft. So I modified this door. You can see the Authy logo on there. I tried to open it, but now whoever placed that door is going to get a notification on their phone saying, hold on, Simon's trying to get into your house. So now we're using the notification system not to do with authentication. This is transactional. Someone's trying to open your door. I approved it. And now, again, Minecraft is waiting for what we call a callback. Our service says, yep, that person with that phone has responded to your notification. Do something about it. And then in this instance, what I did was I opened the door. Now, as a Minecraft demo, we've, now that we've finished the video, 
you can see that um, in Minecraft, that's a little bit of a, a difficult concept to grasp. Why would you want to protect somebody accessing a door? But think about it. Think of any transaction that's happening inside your game, an in-game uh, trade. You've got a valuable item, a weapon you've just spent the last three months trying to acquire. Somebody's compromised your accounts. They've traded it. It's gone. You might be sat somewhere and your phone beeps saying, someone's trying to trade your really valuable weapon inside this game. Do you want to approve that? And I, no, I do not could be an in-game purchase. It might be my going back to Jack, sat on an iPad, playing a game, trying to make a purchase, and I, as the father, get a notification saying, hey, your son's trying to buy $50 worth of gold coins. You want to let that happen? No, deny. So that notification system is a lot more powerful than just, than just that initial authentication. So let's walk through again. What, what is Authy doing? What services are we providing? And why should you care as games developers, as people running games platforms, and just the gaming community in general? So first of all, authentication. This is what most people are initially using us for before they expand to those broader use cases. So 2FA is about protecting your consumers. There's a level of trust here between your, your users of your game and your service itself. Think of all those games that got hacked and where you've spent hours and hours and hours building a profile, enjoying the game, getting deep into it, and boom, someone breaks in, wipes your profile, back to square one. Not only are you losing that user, you're losing trust. Your brand is losing trust. You might release another game, more secure, but is that user going to come back? Oh, I'm not going to play that game. I spent ages trying to do something, and their security was terrible. Got to protect those consumer accounts. But it's not just about consumers. It's about the community. So Humble Bundle is an application you might be familiar with, a service to buy indie games. They use Authy to protect those accounts. Uh, Twitch, we're working with Twitch to deliver the same technologies, which is what we're being broadcast over right now. But it's not just the end user, it's administrators. Some of the attack vectors into some of these services are to get the administrators, because they're not just wiping one profile, they're taking the whole service out. So administrative access to your environment is very critical, and 2FA really significantly improves the security of those platforms. But as I said, this isn't just about authentication. It's about the whole transaction that's taking place inside your gaming environment. It might be in the game itself. So again, we're RESTful APIs. You could call us from code on Xbox. You could call us from code in Minecraft in Java. You can call us from code in your Node.js environment on your website. As long as you can get to the internet, you can query our service and work with it. You don't have to use our application. You can build this into your own application if you want so that your app is showing your UI. You're not having to constrain yourself to what we've built for you. And from the transaction side, it's about protecting worlds. It's protecting those in-game trades. Diablo 3, there were some users of Diablo 3 uh, last year who had their accounts uh, compromised because they were in-game chat. They were getting messages to click on a link. Foolishly, they clicked on the links, and that was delivering malware that took over their computer. So they were already logged in, and then the person that took over the computer started trading all the items out of their accounts, all their gold, all their items, everything that they built up inside that environment in Diablo 3. They had nothing to do to stop it, and boom, it's gone. If that transaction had gone to your phone, you could be like, no, no, and you, at the point where it's happening, you could be denying that action, and... Um, Blizzard would be getting all these notifications saying, this user is denying these things. There must be something going wrong here, and they can act on it proactively. But instead, what happened was they spent a fortune in legal fees, going after the guys, investigations, all that money spent on trying to recover that accident, which could have been prevented with better security at the door. So if you want to know more about what we do, if you want to play with this for real, uh, there's no gates. You just walk to our website, go to authy.com slash developers, and you can create your own free account and go play with it, stick the API wherever you want, enjoy. If you want to play with what I actually have built in Minecraft, although I did hack the code together a bit, I'm still, give me another few weeks to tidy it up so you could use it on your own servers, but it's all on GitHub, so you've got to github slash security pedant. If you want to find out from me how I did it, email me at simon at twilio.com, more than happy to answer your questions, and a huge shout out to the fantastic Minecraft Forge community. Uh, these and Ben, Gigahertz, Sham, Massa, Shaker, all these guys that have been helping me out for the last couple of weeks as I ramped up significantly to put our technology into Minecraft. So thanks very much to that. I think Gordon, you want to... Uh, actually, I'd like to ask Gordon a couple of questions here. He's been hosting Gamespeak with us. Um, what do you think of this? Have you got any... Uh, uh, well, like it's I mean, security is super important right. nowadays, yeah. right? So everyone just wants to have fun playing their game and not feel that their information is at risk. Right. So I, I think um, for a lot of independent developers, uh, they like making games, right? They just want to make fun experiences, and they're not 
right. necessarily security experts. Right. Right. Um, I mean, if you're Blizzard, I'm sure you have a whole department right. focused on this. But if I'm trying to just, you know, keep it real, I, yeah, I don't have key. that. How do they engage, or what do they need to know, you know, There's to engage? Because they're, you know, gamers are gamers, right? Everyone's equally important. Right. How do they, you know? You don't want to spend hours and hours having to understand libraries, write cryptography. You don't have AI. time, right? Like, don't have time. Like that cuts into just money, profits, life. So how yeah. do they engage? So, so that there's there's two angles to that. First of all. You don't have to build the service. Okay. Right? We have built the security of storing the information, the security of connecting to the phone, all yep. of that infrastructure. We have the security experts. Okay. We do the penetration tests on our systems. We pay people to make sure that we're secure. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Then the other side is, how do you actually stick it in the game? Yes. Well, what we don't want you to do is write lines and lines and lines of code, and then if we update our service, you're going in, and, oh, that all the things updated. So we provide the simplest of APIs. You can literally integrate us into your app in 10 to 20 lines of code, depending on the platform. Okay. So you know, you're importing a library, you're calling an API, you're registering a user, you're sending them a notification, you're verifying them. And of course, it won't slow my game down. Right, you know, well, so, well, the, only, the only thing you need to do is implement it in the right way. Got it. So don't overload the end user's process. So I'm reading a question here, because uh -oh. I see our friends here. Let's see here, what's a really good one? Uh, okay, I saw the one I wanted to ask, which is this. I'm gonna ask the question from Rastion N. Uh -oh. Hello, Rastion N. Um, is that his so, Minecraft username, or is that his? Uh, uh, this is their, their username here in Twitch. Oh, okay. Right. And so they've said that we've had two-factor logins for a while. Um, I assume Authy's pitch focuses on the transactional verifications as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's question. a really good question. So yes. 2FA has been around for a long while. Yeah. It's, it's like a lot of progression in technology. Apple's a great example of this. There'll be a technology that's brought around for a long while. They'll change the game by creating a better user experience. Right, so 3G communications and 3D video calls didn't really take off until all of a sudden Apple created a better experience with FaceTime. Sure. So that's what we're doing. We, we, the SMS, the voice calls, they've been around for a while, and to be honest, that's not what we want you to implement. We want you to look at that push notification, and that push notification is by and far the better way to provide that experience to the end user, because all they're doing is going, oh, yes, and that's it. No, to no codes, no texts. And the second part to that is, is, um, yes, we're pushing that for authentication, but as, as I can't remember the gentleman's name, or lady's name, sorry. Uh, person's name. It's person's name, thank you, is the transactional aspect of it. Yes, okay, so there you go, okay. Yeah. And you can do anything you want with that. It's a channel. So you send the data, you say, somebody is doing something, do you approve, yep. and we provide you the space to tell the end user what's happening. So now, do you have to use the uh, the app, or can you integrate it into your own We've, system? How does that? So if you're lazy, yeah. you can tell users go get the Authy app. Okay. Not lazy, but busy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, open to using Authy. Open. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you can use SDKs. Okay. So we our SDKs are rolling out in better, you know, over the next year. Okay. But while our SDK is not available, you can use our APIs. So you can just talk to a RESTful interface. So it's a URL. As long as you can instantiate a HTTP connection, which pretty much every platform allows you to do, For sure. you can talk to us. So how do people find you? Okay, like me? people, yeah, I'm an app, I'm an indie, I've got a game, I understand this is a need. Email me, I tell you email what, me. seriously. How email you? How is it, was well, the deck's gone? How do Dex I gone, you? right, so Simon is my name. Yeah. Twilio is the company. Sure. Simon at Twilio.com. Perfect. I am more than happy to receive your questions. And you can read more about Authy at the Twilio website or at, the Authy yes, website? Yes, so actually, so Twilio acquired Authy this year. Yep. We're a company inside Twilio. Okay. So you can either go to Authy.com okay. or Twilio slash Authy. Okay. Or just type in Authy in a browser, you'll, you'll get to us. Cool. Well, I don't know. What else do you want people to know, right? They're, they're out there. There's, there's gamers here who obviously learned a lot about right. 2FA today, um, but there's also I'll developers what, I'll out there. tell you there. what. I've given yeah. out my email address. Sure. I want to see, t do the coolest implementation of transactional security. I know that sounds a bit sort of, ugh. Yeah. Find a way to introduce that notification, notification into a cool demo, like Unity. Build something in Unity. Build a simple notification. Impress me, and I'll see what I can do for you. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Well, My manager's now going, what is he promising? <laughs> He's promising Games Beat 2016. Uh, you're you going to announce, I want to see some prizing. It's going to be, go. I know you guys have been super patient this year, but next year, it's going to be this awesome. Yeah, no. But like with prizes, we'll apparently, turn it around faster. Gonna be stuff. <laughs> do something interesting. I, yeah, I promise we'll engage with you and we'll do something fun. Well, thank you so much, Simon. Thank you, Gordon. We appreciate it.